Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about where I spend and where I save when it comes to investing in my wardrobe. You guys probably know if you're longtime subscribers of mine that I really believe in investing in timeless classic staples for your wardrobe, things that you're going to have for a really long time to come. And over the years I've sort of identified places where you can get really good quality items which sometimes don't break the bank. I think a lot of where personally you might decide to spend your money is going to depend on where you live, the kind of climate that you face, your lifestyle, so what you're doing day to day, and also your preferences. You might have certain things that you really like spending on, but other things that you personally prefer to save money on. So with that all being said, I think I'm going to dive into it. And I'm going to start by talking about where I like to spend my money, starting with the first category, which is knitwear. So there are three different types of knit sweaters that I like to invest my money in cashmere, cotton, and wool. And I really think that those three types of sweaters are really great for a well-rounded wardrobe. I've got a few examples here that I'll talk you guys through. We'll start with cashmere. If you aren't familiar with this, it is to me, I would consider it more of a high-end luxury fabric. It feels really nice and soft. It's high quality. It is more expensive. Um, and unfortunately, the quality of the fabric has degraded over the years. I've been adding cashmere to my wardrobe for about 10 years now, and I have noticed that there's a bit of a change. It's all to do with the demand. Um, one of the cashmere sweaters that I have in my wardrobe, which I've been loving and wearing a lot recently, is this V-neck ribbed cashmere. This is from Everlane. They do really nice cashmere, which isn't necessarily super expensive. I have bought cashmere sweaters which have, you know, been $800 plus. This one's much more reasonable. I want to say it comes in around the $100 US dollar mark. They have $100 cashmere, which is great. I would recommend going for their darker crew necks if you do pick one up just because I've heard the light ones are sheer. Um, another brand which does really good cashmere which is affordable is Brana and I've had really good experiences with their cashmere crew necks. If you watch my 15 item work wardrobe that teddy bear brown biscuity colored one I was wearing in the start of that is from Grana. Um, I also know that Uniqlo do really great cashmere and that is also quite affordable in the realms of cashmere prices and I've heard really good things about Marks and Spencer's cashmere too. It's on my wish list, haven't picked it up yet but when I do I will let you guys know what I think. The second kind of knitwear that I like to invest in is cotton knitwear and I find that this can be better especially during those transitional months and it's just really nice and soft cotton I think is universally loved fabric uh, and it can be woven into a knit like material. I've got this sweater here from Veta and I'm going to show you guys cutaway so you can see uh, but effectively this is just a really nice oversized sweater that can be worn also as a cardigan. So can wear that as a cardigan and it also has a little uh, detachable funnel neck so you can wear it as a turtleneck which I think is amazing and it's really nice and soft, very breathable as well. The final kind of sweater that I like to have in my wardrobe is a wool sweater and my favourite one is probably this one here from Joseph which I invested in at the start of this year. This is the most expensive of the bunch and it is because it's from a more contemporary designer. The quality is very very good, it feels super soft, it feels really luxurious um, and it feels really nice against my skin, it's not itchy at all which you will find that higher quality wools, more expensive wool sweaters are not itchy at all. So I think it's a good idea to sort of shop around a little bit for your knitwear and think about spending a little bit more money, especially when it's cold. It's going to be something you wear a lot and if you get a really nice well cut piece then you're going to wear it all the time and I can definitely speak to that. Next I want to talk about silks. So silk items in particular are something that I think is worth spending a little bit more money on. In my experience, cheaper silks tend to be sheer, they don't feel very nice and often they're just very poor quality. I think if you're going to buy something like that, it's worth really investing, getting something that is nice quality. doesn't have to be bank breaking though, I don't think. Um, I think Garana do really lovely silk as do Everlane. Theirs does tend to be a little bit sheer or thinner. Probably my favorite silk piece from Garana is their little silk camis. I've got it in three colors now. I really love this style. I just think it's very versatile and very classic. It's just a square cut camisole with spaghetti thin straps and it's double lined which I think is great and it means that you're protecting your modesty. A very good one when it comes to summer and you still want to wear silk. It does tend to be a heavier fabric so it's really good for winter um, and I do have this long sleeved uh, shirt which is from Equipment. 
So equipment is where I first really incorporated silk into my wardrobe, I feel like, aside from the Karen Walker pieces that I was buying an age ago. And uh, it was really what got me into wearing silk blouses. And I particularly love this style because it doesn't have the collar, it has the mandarin collar, and it's striped too, which is really nice, and it has these blues on sleeves. You can get really classic styles from this brand, and I have gotten them before, and I really love them. They are oversized though, I will say, so if you do plan on investing in one of their classic pocket shirts make sure you size down and you will need to dry clean them so that's probably the only thing about silk is if it's a really beautiful brushed or washed silk you're going to want to get it dry clean just to make sure that you maintain that hand feel and also just so that you can make sure it's being cared for properly just because uh, when you're washing it if it gets washed too aggressively you can damage the fibers of the fabric the third place that I like to invest a little bit of extra money is in a classic bag. And I don't think it gets more classic than a tote bag. This one's from Kuyana. I've had this for a little while now. And honestly, the quality is amazing. It really doesn't look like it's been used. It looks very lightly used, if even that. There's just um, slight softening to the leather. And it's the kind of style that I know will not date. I'm going to be able to wear this 10 years from now if I've still got it in my wardrobe, which I think is really amazing. And the quality of this has been really impressive as well. I generally find it's around... The 250 to 500 Australian dollar mark where you can get really high quality bags that you know if they are designer quality but they're classic timeless designs that you can wear for years and years and that's certainly something that I look for I don't necessarily think you need to spend a designer price tag to get a designer quality item and this is a really good example of that and I also think you guys have heard me talk a lot about Linnea but I feel like their bags also kind of really mirror and echo that sentiment as well Keeping in theme of accessories, I also like to spend a little bit of extra money on my footwear. So you guys know I have a bunion on my left foot, which means that I need to wear leather shoes. I can't wear synthetic shoes because they actually uh, act as aggressors and they make the pain worse. So I find a nice leather shoe, which is going to stretch out really well, is the best option for me. Uh, one of the great investments that I have made has been... A pair of loafers these are a great day-to-day -day shoe they look very chic they're sort of a bit more masculine obviously but they go with everything and they're also perfect for the weekend which I like uh, these ones are from Sam Edelman and you guys have heard me talk about them quite a lot they're a dupe for the Gucci bricks loafers I think they're called or the Jordan loafers I forget the name uh, I still haven't invested in those I'm, I've been thinking about it but we've had other things um, on our plate and then I just wanted to mention a second pair of shoes which is a really good pair of leather boots now when it comes to winter time I think you're walking around a lot it's cold you want to protect your ankles and I think you also want something that's going to be able to withstand rain and I've had these leather boss boots for over a year now and I've been really happy with them they're a great alternative to the acne Jensen boots if you're thinking of getting them. The style's slightly different but there are some similarities and they're just very classic and timeless in terms of the design and they've got the silver hardware. So yeah, I think just spending a little bit more money on shoes, you can get really nice styles. You don't need to go down the designer end of the spectrum to get a good quality shoe, but I think spending a little bit more getting something that is well made, maybe made in Italy, is a great way to go. Then the final place I like to invest in my wardrobe is in tailoring. And this is for blazers and coats as well. So I've got a couple of blazers here that I thought I'd talk about. Uh, one thing for me is just getting something that's a really classic cut, something that is again going to last a really long time, that is really nice seams that isn't too extra or out there just just very simple clean minimal lines so probably the blazer well one of the oldest things I've had in my wardrobe at the moment is this black blazer from Helmut Lang and this was a little bit more expensive again it's another contemporary designer so you are paying a little bit more however technically this is a really well made uh, garment uh, you can kind of see it in all of the details that are really subtle it does have kind of a slight pointed design at the bottom. You're gonna see in the try on, but it's also fully lined. It's really nice and warm. It's not too heavy. It's got slight padding in the shoulders as well, which makes it a little bit more structured. And I found that it really does tow that balance between casual and also perfect for the office. So I've been able to wear this so much and I wore it so, so much as a casual piece, particularly when I first got it. I need to whip it out a little bit more, but I do love it. And again, it's stood the test of time. It's done really well. And I mean, I think it still looks pretty new. So uh, it's been well worth the money. Um, a newer piece, which is slightly less expensive, a little bit more affordable, has been my wool oversized blazer from Everlane. I got this in a size two. Uh, and I had been waiting for this to restock since they launched it last year. I decided not to pick it up and I fully regretted it. So <laughs> I've been on the wait list since then. And I'm really pleased to 
be able to add it to my wardrobe. Um, I do think it is a little bit more boxy, but I like that oversized fit. It's longer. Um, I have heard someone else say that they felt thought it felt really thin. Uh, and yes, it is a thin wool blazer, but for me, it's perfect. I live in Sydney. It gets up to 40 degrees in the summer, and our winters are usually around the 19 to 21 degree mark. So I don't need anything overly thick. I think this is a really good transitional piece, and it's one that I know I'm going to wear a lot. The wool feels really beautiful, and I love the little herringbone design. So again, another classic piece, but something that I know I'm going to be able to wear for years and years to come. Then let's talk about coats. So I kind of feel like the coat, that's the finishing piece of your outfit, and it's definitely somewhere that I like to spend a little bit more money. Generally, I'm only investing in one coat per season, so I know I'm going to wear it the whole year, and I like to be able to make sure I'm buying something that I can wear the following year. Sometimes I won't even buy a coat um, in a season, and I kind of um, decided to splurge a lot this year for my 30th birthday, and I got myself the Edith coat from Stella McCartney, and I have to say, I'm so pleased with this coat. I've gotten so many questions about it, whether it was worth the purchase. I 100% think it was. I managed to get it on sale, uh, so I was quite lucky. It didn't cost me quite as much as full retail price, but uh, the, I would pay that. Now having had it, I definitely would pay that, and I've been eyeing up the Bryce coat, which I think is really beautiful too. I'm going to link it down below so you guys can check it out. The lining is really beautiful. The fabric is substantial and thick. I feel so warm when I'm wearing this. I feel really stylish when I'm wearing this because it's slightly more of an eye-catching design because it's an oversized pea coat. So it's slightly different uh, and all, all of the elements on it are really beautiful. Like the oversized big buttons, it just feels luxurious, feels nice and it just makes me feel really good when I wear it, which I really think is the number one key for any purchase that you add to your wardrobe. So now let's talk about where I think you can save when it comes to your wardrobe. And the first thing that I want to highlight are t-shirts. Now I love t-shirts as much as the next girl. They've really become a huge part of my personal style, particularly when it comes to my more casual outfits. But I found that the t-shirts I've liked the most have really been the ones that have been a bit more affordable. Um, I don't think you need to go all out and spend $100 on a tee. I can say from my experience having bought tea by Alexander Wang t-shirts in the past, they were not worth it. They pilled, they aged really badly, and I would never spend that much money on an Alexander Wang t-shirt again. Uh, so I've got two brands here that I thought I'd talk about because they're two different styles of t-shirts. So one is sort of a really lightweight t-shirt that's going to have really good drape to it. Not a lot of structure, but it's perfect for tucking in. And this is a Peruvian Pima cotton tee from Grana. It's a pocket tee. And I really like the relaxed boyfriend fit to it. It feels really nice. It washes really well. And I can say because all of Luke's t-shirts pretty much now are from Grana is that I'm not the only one that loves them. He does too. Uh, and we've had no problems with them at all. They have aged really well, no holes, nothing. And they are really, really well priced. I have gotten some other styles of their t-shirts before and they all feel really lovely. They do have that great hand feel. And like I said, they're quite lightweight too, but not sheer. Although the white can be just a smidge, all the other colors are fine. For something a little bit more structured, Uniqlo have a really great t-shirt in their U-line. It is slightly cropped though, I will say, but it is a really good thick t-shirt. Sorry if that got blown out. Uh, so this is the tee here in the white, and I will uh, show you what it looks like on, but this has a lot more weight to it. It's a lot thicker, and it's really good if you like something that does have more structure to it that is going to give you um, a slightly different shape too. The, uh, other lighter t-shirt that I showed you. I will drop some other options in the description box below for good quality t-shirts that aren't expensive and that will last a really long time. I think that's kind of the key when you're buying a tee because they are such a basic you want them to last. Um, I don't really like the idea of buying one and then buying another one you know six months later. To me that's not really uh, sustainable. Next is denim and I have a bit of a pile of denim here because there are so many brands on the high street that do good denim well. And I want to run through them all. It's not just denim jeans, it's also skirts as well. Um, ASOS do really good denim skirts actually and my favorites probably from the brand. I've got this black one here, you guys have seen this so many times and this is still available. I think I bought this over a year ago and I'm surprised to see it still on the website. So. ASOS is great for a denim skirt that doesn't really have a lot of give, it's just something that's really rigid, which I like. I'll show you guys how that fits. They also do really good denim jeans. I haven't had the best experience with all of the styles though. I can speak to the Farley mom jean style, which is the one which really got me hooked on their jeans. I've, I've purchased a couple pairs since, um, and it's this 
plus a pair here with the stepped hem which I think is really nice. They feel really good quality. They do give slightly upon wear, but then they snap back in when you wash them. Um, I feel like the, the weight of the denim is really, really good quality as well. It, I've just been so happy with them and they've been one of my favorite pairs of jeans. I also have a pair of jeans here from Topshop. I think you guys know Topshop are pretty great when it comes to jeans and they're not overly expensive. They tend to last pretty well as well. I tried the Jamie jeans years and years ago and I've been meaning to pick up another pair just to see how they fit now. I have found that these give just a smidge through the legs, which I like because when I first tried them on, they were they were pretty tight. Um, another brand which does denim quite well, although I would say you've got to pick which um, style you go for, is uh, Everlane, and they're pretty affordable. I want to say they're around the 70 US dollar mark, which is not overly expensive, uh, and they do use a technique which is water reducing. So I think they recycle 99% of the water. You'll have to, I'll drop information in the description box anyway. Uh, this is their cheap straight leg jean I've got it in a couple of colors now I will say the bone fabric is of all the denim I've tried from them it is the one that gives the most so it's gonna give quite a lot around the hip the black is really stiff and structured so it's not got a lot of give to it the wash black is probably my favorite I think that one's got the most give and it's a really nice color um, I don't think that their stretch denim is overly great though so go for the usual jeans don't go for the stretch denim if you ask me um, I just found that my uh, straight leg jeans were way more comfortable from them than the than the uh, stretch denim then I also just want to highlight um, Dr. Denim. I think their jeans run around the $100 Australian mark, which I think is pretty good. And I've had this particular pair for five years now. Um, so I don't really think you need to spend over $100 on a pair of jeans. And also, if you're lucky, you can get a pair of Levi's for under $100, bucks, which I think is pretty good. And they're, of course, kind of the pioneers of denim, and they do it really well. So I've got a pair of straight leg uh, wedgie jeans from them. And I got these for $40, which I think is pretty good. They're brand new too. So those are all of my denim picks. I, like I said, I really don't think you need to spend a lot of money on jeans. I think that the high street does them so well. While there are great designer brands out there who do denim amazingly, it's definitely not something you need to extend your budget for. Next to trousers, which might seem surprising given I said that I like to invest in tailoring. However, I've really found that High Street do trousers very well. One of my favorite pairs is from Topshop and it's just a, a high-waisted style with the paper bag waist and tapered leg. They are a dream on, however, they're not made of a natural fiber. That's the only downside to it. However, I do find that their tailoring can be pretty spot on. So if you are kind of entering the workforce, you can get a really nice pair of trousers for a low price point. So I've got a couple pairs I thought I would show you. Um, this first pair I got quite a lot of interest in from my uh, 15 item work wardrobe video and is this pair from Zara. Now these have a really light uh, sort of houndstooth gingham design on them. They're belted at the waist and the thing I like about these the most is that they're made from linen. So natural fiber, I really like the cut of these. It's a little bit different for me because it's just completely straight through the leg. I think these are perfect for the office, particularly in the summertime when you want to be wearing natural fibers but you want to look cute at the same time. <laughs> then the other pair I have, I've had for a couple of years now, and these are from Uniqlo, and these are just their smart style ankle pants. And I have to say, I think that these are spot on, such a classic style. They're really easy to wear. They've got the elasticated waistband, which is amazing, and they're tapered in at the ankle. I got mine taken up using their in-store tailoring service, which I highly recommend going and utilizing, um, and it only took a day, I think, for them to be ready. So that's a really great place to invest. They look like wool, they're not, but they do look, they do have that um, perception, and they're really nice and warm, a great staple for kind of autumn winter season, and they have lighter colors as well if you're kind of looking for a more neutral color for spring and summer. So where I was saying I think that you should invest in a classic bag, I think when it comes to trendy bags, that's where you can save. Now this bag here I got because I was really keen on trying out the stout or stored, someone please tell me in the description box below, I still don't know, uh, the bucket bag, the Moreau bucket bag. And I really couldn't bring myself to spend, I think it's around the five to $600 mark on a bag, which to me just seemed like a passing phase. So I found this one at Seed and I found a really similar one at Anthropology. Actually, I'm going to link 
both options down below for you guys um, and it gives me that same look but for a fraction of the price I can buy into the trend without having to spend all of my money I can kind of invest the rest of that money wisely in another area of my wardrobe if I so wish I think this is really fun it's a great little option for summer and you know I'm not gonna feel too bad if I stop wearing it so much whereas if I'd really splurge on the designer option I would kind of be kicking myself if I wasn't wearing it all the time so yeah, that's one area of my wardrobe where I think I can save. Next are cotton shirts. And I will say this as someone who has invested a lot in a cotton shirt before, I don't think you need to. I think the high street do poplin cotton shirts very well. You can get really nice wash cotton shirts as well. I've got this beautiful cotton shirt which is from Madewell. This is their Korea shirt. I've had this for a couple of years now and it's a classic style. It's got the drop shoulders and it just fits really nicely. I want to say I probably spent around the $500 mark for my white shirt that I've got in my wardrobe and I don't wear it enough and I kind of cringe at how much money I spent on it and I know I could have gotten something equally as nice from the high street so again that's somewhere else I think you can save a little bit of money when it comes to investing in your wardrobe. Now the final place I like to save is occasion wear. Now this is a really tricky area to navigate because obviously if you've got a special occasion you want to wear something nice and generally it comes with a high price tag. For me I know I'm not going to get my cost per wear. I don't actually go out that frequently and those special occasions are far few in between. So what I like to do is invest mostly in pre-loved items. I find that that's the best way for me to get something that is high quality, that is not going to break the bank that it's going to look really chic and then afterwards I can sell it on to a new home. That's sort of what I like to do when it comes to occasion wear and a really good example of one that I bought recently is this Lover Dandelion dress. Now I used to have actually the high necked version of this but it was a little bit too big and when I spotted this one on eBay I decided to jump on it. It's got this really beautiful v-neck detail and then it's got um, it's kind of gathering here at the waist with ties and then a hanky hem floaty skirt and this is really perfect for all kinds of special occasions. I could wear this to a wedding, I could wear it for a nice meal out, I could wear it to a christening, I could wear it you know for a spring party. I just know that I will be able to get a little bit of wear out of this and if I do tire of it I can on sell it to someone else who's going to love it just as much as I did. So that for me is a really great way to get a nice piece of occasion wear that I can get my cost per wear out of and then eventually sell it on. Other places where you can get really beautiful occasion wear for a fraction of the price are the Real Real Vestier Collective. I know a lot of people sell stuff on Depop. That's probably another place you can check out. I might maybe see if I can find any other alternatives for pre-loved marketplaces, but it's definitely something that I like to look at as a first option. I also like to look at designers which aren't necessarily super expensive, but have really nice tailored pieces that are generally classically cut. So Beckham Bridge is a really great brand for that and I find on the Iconic there's a brand called I think it's Cali that does really beautiful dresses as well and sometimes I find some really great ones from Tusa the label too. So I'd look at that as kind of an option. For me buying pre-loved is definitely where it's at when it comes to investing in my wardrobe in general. I find it's a great way to buy high quality pieces but for a fraction of the price. I love keeping everything within that same ecosystem. So that is where I like to save and where I like to spend when it comes to my wardrobe. I hope you guys enjoy watching this video and I would love to know where you like to save and where you like to spend when it comes to your own wardrobes because I imagine that we're all quite different in that regard um, and I'd like to know if you've got your own little journey on how you kind of came to that conclusion. Please let me know in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video I'd love if you could give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you'd like to see more videos from me. That's it from me today. I'll see you guys next time with a brand new video. See you soon and thank you so much for watching. Bye!